elementary school. I am making this movie in response to math with Madeline. In math with Madeline, Madeline said that she did not like math investigations. She said that there's too much writing your explanations. But I think that if you're able to write and explain yourself, then you will be able to it will help you in 20 minutes when you have to share with your class or when you're out of college and you have to share with a whole conference room of people. She also said that you work a problem to death. I think that we work a problem deeply, maybe not to death, but I think that when you work a problem deeply, you understand more about connections and conjectures about if you can use the way you solve this to solve this and all these different things, then just knowing the answer to that one problem. Knowing the answer is, you know, it's valuable, but it's not the main thing. And back to the explaining. Where would we be if Da Vinci didn't ex couldn't explain himself? Or if Albert Einstein couldn't explain himself? Or would the human race be, you know? And you and you mentioned Turk math and Saxon math and Singapore math, but you never mentioned a teacher. Hi, I'm Jen Rivas. I'm Mason's fifth grade teacher. And I'm a little bit surprised that Madeline did not mention a teacher either, because I think good teachers are necessary in order to support good mathematics. Um, when Mason came into my classroom, he wasn't just an empty vessel that I needed to fill with numbers, along with all the other students in my classroom. Students come into our classrooms already knowing information. And our job as teachers is to find out what they already know in order to help guide us, in order to help guide them to where they need to be. There are things that Mason knows that other students may not know. And in his explanations, students are able to learn from him. In addition to other students, there are students who know other things that Mason may not know. And through that classroom community, with each of us knowing different things, each student is able to act as a teacher. So Madeline, we are going to take a look at the activity you did. And we are going to work this problem deeply today, Mason, but not to death. So here it is, Monsieur. It says, choose a number to count by. Pick one you think will add exactly on 300. Skip count by this number on your calculator. Does it work? If so, write how many of your number it takes to get to 300. We're going to use the same number you used, which is 6. Before we use our calculator today, Mason, I want you to think about your calculator like a tool. It's going to help us get where we need to go, but it's not going to do the thinking for us. Because by itself, a calculator is pretty useless. It needs to have a mind behind it. So, 6. Let's start with 6 plus 6. That gives us 12. So we have 12. 18, which is 3 6s. 24, which is 4 6s. 30, which is 5 6s. Okay, and let's stop at 30 for a minute. Okay, what do, you, what do you know about the number 30? And more specifically, what do you know about 30 and its relationship to 300? 30 is a tenth of 300. Okay, how can we use what we know about 30 to help us figure out how many sixes are in 300? Well, there was five sixes in each 30. So if there's five sixes in each 30 and we multiply 30 by 10, we have to take the five, multiply that by 10, and we'll have the answer. So how, what is the answer? How many sixes are in 300? 50. Okay, so the numbers you tried, six. Did it land exactly on 300? Yes, it did. How many in 300 was 50? Is there a way we could check our work to make sure we were correct? We could take 300 divided by six. Okay, let's do that. That equals 50. All right. We got one. We could try three. Okay. What would be your prediction about how many times three could go into 300? It would be 100. Because it's half of six, which would double how many times it goes into. Let's write that down. Okay. Numbers? Three. Pick another number. What about if we doubled six? Should we try that? Okay, let's double six. Okay. So, 12. Okay, so what's, what do you um, predict? How many 12s are in 300? I predict that it will be 25 since we're doubling the 6, making it a bigger chunk, so it'll have less space to go into 30. 
Okay, let's 300. Into 300. Okay, let's write it down and then let's check it. Or let's check it first before we write it down. Okay. And that equals 300. So gotcha. what about 24 then? Okay, let's try 24. Okay, 24. Would we have 25, which would equal 12.5? Why do you think we would have 25? Because we doubled the amount of, we doubled 12, so we have to have this. Okay, let's see what happens when we do that. That would give us 12.5, wait, but that, it's not a whole number, so it can't be a factor. Okay, so would we land exactly on 300 counting by 24? No. Okay. So. Okay, Mason, so looking at your numbers, is there any number on your list here that would help you figure out another number to try to find a factor, if it's a factor of 300? What if we try to find thirds instead of just halves or doubles? Okay, tell me more about what you mean. For example, half, or I mean, a third of six is two. Okay. So would two work? Let's find out. Two. If you, so you divided six by three to get two. So what would we have to do We would do have next? to take this and multi multiply it by 3. So we get 150 and 2. So 2 times 150. 2. 2 times 150. You know, I bet you could do it in your head. Yeah. Just take 150 and it's, it's 300. Okay. So let's write that one down. Okay. Two fifty. And yes. So we could third twelve. And we would get four. Alright. So four. And then we have to take twenty-five and multiply by three, which is seventy-five. So four times seventy-five equals three hundred. Yeah. So, sorry you didn't have a good experience with math investigations, Madeline, but personally, I love it. It helps you find different invest helps you find different relationships like we did here with numbers. It helps you think on your feet. It helps your life not be tied to a script, and most important, it helps you work with other people like my teacher. I enjoyed working with you today too, Mason. So, have a good afternoon and good thinking.